actually the thursday class has been postponed today um dr rakshit janna is our uh, senior resident very active and enthusiastic uh, intense with the uh, icu take care of everything and he is uh, he said uh, initially he wants to talk on organ transplant uh, which is very important and uh, daily we are seeing in uh, icu the majority of the patients of cirrhotic patients cardiac patients are coming with the uh, all this type of syndromes so organ transplant so we, he is going to enlighten uh, one by one on organ transplant regarding pathophysiology and uh, various types of uh, syndromes and what is the treatment now i request dr akshit to start the presentation thank you sir thank you for the kind introduction uh, today uh, i will discuss in brief around or about organ prostate and how various organs uh, usually they have interactions with each other in uh, patients uh, this is a very vast topic which i try to concise it in a way, uh, 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 much minimal state as each of it is in separate talk hopefully i'll just give a brief outline of what is it uh, i may not be able to cover all the topics okay now coming to uh coming to organ prostate it is defined as a complex and mutual biological communication between distinct organs mediated by signaling factors uh i would like to outline what all i would like to discuss i would like to discuss heptorenal syndrome cardiorenal syndrome pulmonary renal syndrome heptopulmonary syndrome and hepatico adrenal syndrome and coming to heptorenal syndrome uh, a pa uh, patient with advanced cirrhosis may develop a specific type of renal dysfunction called heptorenal syndrome which is usually a severe uh, severe complication of advanced cirrhosis it was way first described in the year of 1939 coming to the etiological factors which can cause heptorenal syndrome um, are refractory ascites uh, which is the most common cause of type 2 hrs dilutional hyponatremia uh, decreased cardiac index which may present as shock uh, in patient with septis spontaneous bacterial peritonitis large volume paracentesis of greater than 5 liters without adequate albumin supplementation nephrotoxic agents like nsaids iv contrast drugs or few antibiotics uh, massive bleeding from esophageal varices post tips uh, procedure diuretics coming to the pathophysiology so the major pathophysiology which is contributing for the heptorenal syndrome is the hemodynamic alteration secondary to hypovolemia uh, and red, uh, increased portal hypertension causing decreased cardiac output or which finally leads to reduced effective arterial blood volume with severe splanchnic vasodilation and renal vasoconstriction this was all which was thought to be the major pathophysiological processes but uh, in the coming recent years because of advances there are few other added uh, new pathological factors which include systemic inflammation because of bacterial translocation and inflammatory cytokines microvascular dysfunction initially cholemic nephropathy was uh, my primary uh, cholemic uh, was thought not to be causing hrs but uh, recently because of bile salt induced uh, renal tubular injury even cholemic nephropathy is also being one of the cause for heptorenal syndrome raised intra abdominal hypertension which can lead into acs can cause abdominal compartment syndrome uh, cause heptorenal syndrome cirrhotic cardiopathy and rarely even heptorenal syndrome can also lead to hepto um, renal syndrome in the year of uh, 1996 uh, my, international consensus of hsitis club uh, has first put forward uh, how to diagnose uh, hrs based on uh, major and minor criteria major criteria include uh, acute or chronic hepatic disease with severe hepatic insufficiency and portal hypertension uh, with low gfr um, um, with a creatinine value of greater than 1.5 mg per deciliter um, or absence of shock bacterial infection or uh, in or patient was not of any nephrotoxic drug absence of loss of gi fluids or uh, a patient has loss of renal fluid uh, with peripheral edema and all that uh, 
um, improvement in renal function after withdrawal of diuretics, expansion of plasma volume with 1.5 liters of isotonic saline on plasma expanders, and protein yield of less than 500 mg per deciliter with absence of ultrasound evidence of obstructive uropathy or parenchyma uh, renal disease. These are all the major criteria which was put forward by SIT club. The minor criteria include urine output of less than 500 ml per day with urinary sodium of less than 10 millivolts per liter with urinary osmolarity greater than plasma osmolarity, osmolarity, urinary blood cells of less than 50 per hypophile and serum sodium concentration less than 130 millivolts per liter. Uh, based on the uh, time post and precipitating factors, um, the, the HRS was divided into four types. Type 1, which is cirrhosis with rapidly progressive renal failure. Type 2 is cirrhosis with subjective renal failure. Type 3 is cirrhosis with uh, type 1 or type 2 HRS superimposed on chronic kidney disease or acute kidney injury. Type 4 with acute fulminant liver failure with HRS. Till uh, this uh, classification has come, everyone was thinking that HRS is secondary to chronic kidney disease. But after this has come, uh, in type 3, they include even the acute renal injury as one of the precipitating cause of HRS. Um, in the year, uh, as the, uh, over a period from 1996, over a, a lot of evolution has come in the uh, diagnostic criteria of HRS. But at, uh, finally, in the year of 2019, Angeli et al. has introduced a new diagnostic criteria for HRS, which include um, the patient who should be a, a patient of cirrhosis with acute liver failure, acute or chronic liver failure, increase in serum creatinine of greater than 0.3 mg per deciliter within 48 hours or greater than 50% from baseline value, so, or urine output of less than 0.5 ml per kg of body weight with, with greater than 6 hours. No or partial response according to uh, ICA at least for two days of diuretic withdrawal and volume expansion with albumin. Absence of shock, no current or recent treatment with nephrotoxic drugs, and absence of parenchymal disease as indicated by proteinuria of greater than 500 mg per day or microhematuria or renal biomarkers or abnormal renal sonography. Suggestion of renal vasoconstriction with a fractional excretion of sodium. This was all uh, development based on the KITGO guidelines. Uh, given by engineer at all. Uh, coming to the newer uh, classification, uh, um, uh, it was divided into HRS AKI and HRS non AKI. Uh, HRS AKI is equivalent to HRS 1 of old classification, and HRS non AKI includes HRS 2 of old classification. HRS non AKI is further divided into HRS AKD, HRS CKD. Uh, so, what is this AKI, AKD, and CKD? Uh, after an uh, insult, if the patient's uh, renal parameters improve within less than one week, it is termed as AKI. If it takes a duration of uh, mean of seven days to uh, less than 90 days, it is termed as AKD. And if it is greater than 90 days, it is called CKD. Finally, leads to uh, end stage renal disease. In HRS, AKI, the diagnostic criteria include absolute increase in serum creatinine of greater than 0.3 mg per deciliter within 48 hours or urine output of less than 0.5 ml per kg body weight with greater than 6 hours. How many slides? You can slow, Jinnah. Okay. You have passed it like me. Uh, percentage increase in serum creatinine greater than 50% using the last available value of uh, out, uh, outpatient serum creatinine within three months of baseline. Um, coming to HRS non AKI, it includes HRS AKD and CKD. They are diagnosed based on the uh, EGFR value of less than 60 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square for less than three months in the absence of other structural causes. Percentage increase in serum creatinine of less than 50% with the last available value of outpatient serum creatinine within three months of baseline or EGFR less than 60 greater than three months in the absence of other structural, which is defined as CKD. Coming to the potential causes of AK and cirrhotics, um, uh, they may be on a, um, NSIs, beta blockers, uh, uh, angiotensin receptor blockers, which should be uh, withheld. And uh, based on uh, essential uh, international consensus club of SITs uh, um, and all that, uh, the patient, we should look for uh, pre renal causes, intrinsic renal causes, which include glomerular factors and uh, tubular factors, and uh, post renal causes. Coming to pre renal, we should look for um, uh, the volume status. If the patient is on any laxatives or diuretics, we should stop them and we should treat them with IV fluids. Uh, and uh, if needed, we can replace albumin. Uh, coming to uh, um, uh, renal factors, which include uh, glomerular like acute uh, uh, interstitial nephritis uh, uh, and glomerular nephritis, any associated 
uh, disease is there uh, need to be ba treated based on it if it is acute tubular injury is secondary to um, uh, prolonged hypovolemia or gi bleed then uh, it should be treated accordingly if the patient has having large tens ascites and landing into acs large volume paracentesis with alpine supplementation may be of helpful in them um, we should look for uh, uh, post renal causes like obstructive uropathy uh, and we should uh, stop the underlying culprit agent and if needed we can put the patient on uh, foley catheterization Uh, coming to biomarkers, um, uh, recently these biomarkers have played a, a very a, a important role in identifying early a, AKI at a very early stages. Uh, biomarkers have been uh, further divided into uh, uh, damage markers and functional markers. Damage markers are the one uh, which uh, helps in identify the subclinical AKI when the patient is having a normal renal function, uh, which include NGAL, KIM1. Um, and all that uh, coming to functional uh, uh, functional markers uh, they become elevated after the uh, the kidney is damaged which include creatinine cystatin c which are a bit delayed when compared with that of the subclinical uh, damage markers okay um, this was an egyptian uh, study on the use of ngal as a novel marker in early diagnosis of heptorenal syndrome in advanced cirrhotic patients which stated that urinary ngal shows noticeable difference between degree of elevation with different causes of ak but is somehow uh, uh, can be used to diagnose hrs but the problem is this is not available everywhere and uh, based on ngal we cannot uh, decide on the prognosis uh, of the patient Uh, so in a natural AKI and cirrhosis, the patient can be have been AKI stage one or either two and three. If the patient is in stage one of AKI, uh, we need to monitor him closely. The, any risk factors such as nephrotoxic agents, NSAIDs need to be withdrawn. If the patient is having an infection, treat the underlying infection. And if the patient is hypovolemic, uh, um, volume expansion should be done. If the symptoms is all closely follow up the patient. If the patient is stable, further uh, treatment of AKI. Decide, can be decided on case basis. If he is progressing either into stage two or stage three AK, um, then uh, withdraw the diuretics. And uh, if uh, only volume expansion on help, even we can try to add albumin. Initially, we can give albumin of one gram per kg per day, up to maximum of hundred grams per day. And later on, we can uh, give it based on the requirement up to twenty to sixty mg if, um, per day. Okay, if the patient responds, uh, then have a close follow. If it doesn't respond, then look at the criteria of HRS. If he meets with criteria of HRS, we can uh, treat him with vasoconstrictors and albumin. Uh, if he doesn't meet, uh, look for uh, specific treatment other than AKF, other AKF phenotypes. Coming to the treatment uh, uh, of uh, heptorenal syndrome, general includes uh, discontinuous all the nephrotoxic agents, NSAIDs, uh, any renal toxic drugs, all that. Um, uh, if uh, the patient has any underlying infection, treat anti infection accordingly with antibiotic. If the patient has tens ascites, large volume uh, paracentesis could be done along with albumin supplementation. Uh, if the patient is hyponatremic, uh, we can put the patient on low salt diet and free water restriction. Um, um, these are all the supportive measures coming to the medical therapy uh, of all the uh, available. Uh, Medications, systemic vasoconstrictors are the most promising agents up to date. Uh, um, we give IV albumin as albumin helps to maintain the cardiac output, improve effective circulatory volume, and cardiac contractility. It is given as a um, um, dosage of one gram per day, up to maximum of one gram per kg per day, up to maximum of hundred grams per day, followed by continuation of sixty to twenty um, to sixty mg per kg per day. Um, initially, renal vasodilators have been used. Uh, in the treatment of HRS, but because of their adverse effect and lack of benefit of using renal vasodilators, its use has been abandoned. Uh, later, renal vaso uh, vasoconstrictor agents have also been tried, but uh, they are also seen to uh, as they as they are known to relieve renal vasoconstriction, but it led to further worsening. of renal function to they are not in present use uh, systemic vasoconstrictors 
these are the ones uh, which are the most promising agents as they interrupt uh, splanchnic vasodilation which will relieve the intense vasoconstriction in nestalcystin it has been used both in uh, liver failure and uh, renal failure the exact mechanism of uh, an nestalcystin is not known but as it is a free rad uh, radical scavenger it is found to be of some help coming to the medications um, uh, we have vasopressin analogs like vasopressin ternipressin ornipressin vasopressin and ornipressin are having more ischemic side effects so not uh, very commonly used coming to ternipressin we, we can use ternipressin either as a bolus dose or in continuous infusion which i will discuss in the coming slide along with that we have some of the starting analogs like octreotide uh, right and alpha adrenergic agonists like uh, norepinephrine and midodrine Uh, both uh, somatostatin analogs and alpha adrenergic agonists are ineffective in the treatment of type 2 hrs um, coming to terlipressin uh, it has good uh, in it has a good uh, um, potential of reversibility of the disease both in type 1 and type 2 hrs but in type 2 hrs after treating with terlipressin the chances of recurrence of the disease is very much higher uh, this was an uh, uh, study by um, Marta Cavallin et al. Um, uh, of uh, um, based on early pressing given by continuous infusion versus IV boluses, uh, which uh, um, he finally concluded that early pressing given by intravenous infusion is better tolerated than intravenous boluses in the treatment of type one HRS. Okay. Uh, uh, while using early pressing, then we should maintain. Uh, we should uh, be conscious enough to maintain the ad, uh, enough of cardiac output. If there is a fall in cardiac output, early pressing can worsen the systemic vasoconstriction, thereby causing potential harm to the patient. Coming to the side effects of uh, early pressing, the patient may have persistent diarrhea, abdominal ischemia, peripheral ischemia, um, uh, and angina pectoris, circulatory overload. Um, Coming to the algorithm of choice of vasoconstrictor agent, the patient is diagnosed with heptorenal syndrome and is in, in um, acute and chronic liver failure. Uh, we, if the patient uh, is uh, stable, we can put him on early pressure. If there are any contraindication of early pressure, like we discussed, uh, because of any diarrhea or uh, any angina uh, or anything, then we'll admit him ICU and we can put him on noradrenal. If the patient has having no acute uh, uh, failure, then we can uh, try to put him on terlipressin and admit. Or if uh, terlipressin is contraindicated, put in ICU, use noradrenaline, or we can admit him in ward and use um, midodrenaline plus octreotide. Okay. Um, so finally, in a nutshell, uh, we have uh, type one HRS can be treated with vasoconstrictors, albumin. And uh, rarely, the patient may go into tips, and the final resort of treatment is a liver transplantation. Coming to type two HRS, uh, uh, as type two HRS is a chronic disease which evolution which evolutes over a period of time. Uh, here, vasoconstrictor and uh, large volume paracentesis may be of help to the patient, and they may uh, require tips uh, if there is contraindication, uh, and the patient may uh, finally go for liver transplantation. The type three HRS, the patient can have CKD, so the patient can benefit uh, benefit with CRRT, and uh, they they are usually um, advised liver and kidney transplantation. Type four HRS is in pulmonary disease, and the patients ideally require liver transplantation. Coming to contraindications of these vasoconstrictor therapies, uh, it cannot be given in patients of CAD who are um, known case of cardiomyopathies, who are prone for cardiac arrhythmias, who are on cardiac and respiratory failure uh, over the patients with CVA, peripheral vascular disease, uh, terminal liver disease, advanced HCC, and in patients whose age is greater than 70 years. Um, this is the coming to pharmacological management. Other measures include uh, trans uh, uh, jugular intrahepatic photosystemic shunt can be done in patients uh, with uh, HRS, uh, type 2 HRS, uh, and type 1 HRS. Uh, but, uh, type 2 HRS patients benefit um, more with tip surgery. Uh, um, rarely, peritoneal venous shunting can be done. Uh, the patient may um, final resort of treatment is the liver transplantation, and in type 2 HRS, it can be liver and kidney transplantation. The patient may require renal replacement therapy as in uh, type, um, and uh, nowadays, uh, newer modalities like almond dialysis and artificial level supports are the emerging therapies. 
coming to renal replacement therapy the renal replacement therapy it, it does not improve the patient renal status it just um, helps to support uh, the organs indications of renal replacement therapy uh, when the patient is unresponsive to drugs when he is volume overloaded when he is uremic when there are electrolytes imbalance and as a bridge to transplant various type of alvin dialysis modalities include molecular adsorption recirculating system prometheus and single pass alvin dialysis coming to predictors of survival of uh, heptorenal syndrome um, uh, uh, the bad predictors are the duration and degree and the cause of renal dysfunction patients requiring in, uh, hemodialysis and the pre existing comorbidities the patients with young, uh, 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 good predictors of survival include younger patients uh, uh, age of the donor non alcoholic liver disease and low post transplant bilirubin the median age of survival without treatment for type 1 hrs is less than 2 weeks and for type 2 hrs is about 6 months prognosis of people with liver failure is much worse uh, if they develop hrs liver transplant is known to show a bit improvement in the survival rate coming to prevention of hrs avoidance of large volume uh, depletion and over usage of diuretics uh, gi uh, preventing factors which cause GI, massive gi bleeding and uh, when doing uh, large volume uh, paracentesis always use alvin helps in prevention of hrs uh, next coming to nephrotactic pain it should be judiciously managed um, if a patient presents with uh, Uh, spontaneous uh, uh, patients uh, i have prophylactic antibiotic if a suspect spontaneous bacterial peritonitis maybe even a simple cephalosporin like ceftriaxone is also helpful to prevent infection in these patients uh, and pre- uh, measures to prevent uh, varicell bleeding in using uh, um, um, uh, injections uh, clerotherapy everything can be helpful um, in patients associated with severe alcoholic hepatitis pentoxifilin in uh, has shown a bit uh, um better uh, to prevent the hrs so type 1 and type 4 hrs uh, needs intense therapy in icu whereas type 2 hrs can be managed on a op basis there was something interesting uh, found uh, called pseudo heptorenal syndrome which was described in 1972 by con it was concurrent hepatic and renal dysfunction secondary to infection in systemic circulatory genetic or after administration of drugs and toxins here liver does not play any etiological role Uh, that is in uh, brief about uh, um, um, heptorenal syndrome come so coming to take home message use uh, always diagnostic criteria to diagnose hrs and uh, diagnose it at a very early stage rule out all the other causes of aki um, coming to medical treatment passive constrictors along with albumin is the major uh, um, definitive treatment is a liver transplantation it is usually precipitated by infection and uh, inflammation so try to prevent them next coming to the second topic cardiorenal syndrome it is defined as a condition characterized by initiation and progression of renal insufficiency secondary to heart failure um, um, what happens in cardiorenal syndrome as one organ fails a vicious cycle develops in which there is activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system with imbalance between nitric oxide and the reactive oxygen species with uh, over activation of sympathetic nervous system um, inflammation interact with each other synergize to lead to uh, cardiorenal syndrome Uh, biomarkers can help in contribution of early diagnosis of this pathophysiological condition ronco et al uh, well has classified crs into five broad types uh, um, which include uh, type 1 uh, crs which is uh, which is acute cardiorenal here um, initially there will be acute uh, worsening of heart which will lead to aki and renal dysfunction as seen in cardiogenic shock and acute decompensated heart failure Uh, type 2 cardiorenal syndrome is a uh, is seen in patients with chronic heart function leading to progressive uh, kidney dysfunction seen in patients with uh, chronic heart failure or leading to c uh, ckd um, um, the type 1 and type 2 uh, disorders in which heart uh, um, in heart abnormalities causing renal dysfunction type 3 and type 4 are the reno cardiac in which because of renal dysfunction the cardiac status gets affected in type 3 it is acute worsening of the kidney injury leading to acute heart injury or heart dysfunction as in as because of volume overload or inflammatory surge or metabolic disturbances the patient uh, having aki lands into heart failure 
type 4 is chronic renocardia in which the chronic kidney disease uh, because of um, uh, CKD associated cardiomyopathy causing uh, myocardial remodeling and finally leads to heart failure. Type 5 is the secondary renal, cardiorenal uh, disease in which systemic conditions like sepsis, diabetes, amyloidosis, cirrhosis, hypertension, vasculitis lead to uh, dysfunction of heart and kidney. Coming to the pre-existing risk factors of uh, cardiorenal syndrome of uh, anemia, uh, calcium phosphate crystal deposition, which is called crystal uh, nephropathy, is found to be one of the contributing factors. Malnutrition, inflammation, uh, atherosclerosis syndrome, role of asymmetric dimethyl arginine, angiogenin 2 receptors have uh, all perceived known to be pre-existing risk factors. Coming to the mechanism of uh, uh, cardiorenal syndrome. It is because of overactivation of RAT system with uh, um, uh, uh, overactivation of sympathetic nervous system, inflammation, and uh, um, effect of uh, vascular endothelial growth factors with arginine vasopressin effects and hemodynamic impairment. Uh, coming to type 1 uh, cardiorenal syndrome, uh, it is here the um, there is initially um, heart failure which causes the uh, AKA. So, uh, the underlying mechanisms uh, was first explained by Guyton. So, it is called known as Guyton hemodynamic model in which there is volume expansion which leads to increased cardiac output uh, finally causing increased peripheral resistance, increased blood pressure causing pressure natiuresis uh, which further causes uh, nitric oxide and reactive oxygen species disbalance causing sympathetic nervous system and renin angiotensin system activation causing inflammation this forms a vicious cycle which uh, rotates around heart and renal failure finally causing the cardiovascular damage even uh, in this type of crs there is activation of baroreceptor complex is also seen uh, it is further divided into high output cardiac failure and low output cardiac failure. In low output cardiac failure, it was because of decreased cardiac output, whereas in high output failure, it is because of decreased peripheral vascular resistance. Coming to uh, management, uh, so as this is secondary to uh, uh, fluid overload and uh, uh, excessive activation, um, uh, um, if the patient is on diuretics, uh, I mean, as the fluid is fluid overload, we put them on diuretic. But overzealous use of diuretics can cause exacerbation of neurohumoral activity, which further activates rash and further worsens the left ventricular function. As the patient is having and heart dysfunction, putting him in inotropes, vasodilators may be of help. As he is overloaded, uh, uh, doing uh, ultra filtrate may be of benefit. Uh, even adenosine 1 receptor antagonist, which was thought to be one of the uh, factor causing uh, um, risk factor, may help in uh, receptor agonist, so antagonist may help in the management of the type 1 CRS. Uh, um, there was a trial known as Everest trial, uh, um, uh, which was used in the management of type prevalence of renal dysfunction is high in patients hospitalized with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Coming to type 2 cardiorenal syndrome, um, here um, the patient will have chronic heart failure, uh, which leads to further worsening of chronic kidney disease. This occurs as the patient is having chronic congestive cardiac failure leading to decreased renal perfusion which causes increased chronic renal um, venous congestion thereby leading to increased renal vascular resistance uh, thus causing chronic renal failure along with uh, atherosclerotic changes occur over a period of time. So, um, uh, how to manage these patients? Uh, we put him on diuretics, um, um, block any angiotensin uh, system, and vasodilators may be of help. Coming to type 3 cardiorenal uh, um, syndrome, this was a renocardiac disease. So, because of acute kidney injury, uh, um, this further leads to acute heart failure. Um, here the patient is, as is uh, in AKI, the patient will have a lot of metabolic disturbances like hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, uh, uremia, accelerated hypertension. So control the hypertension uh, and uh, measures to control hyperkalemia uh, acido, uh, if uh, needed dialysis for uremia, acidosis can be done. Uh, 
and there will be a lot of inflammation. Coming to type 4 cardiorenal syndrome, this is also a renal cardiac issue, chronic kidney disease, precipitating chronic renal failure. Here the patient will have a lot of comorbidities which um, uh, help him landing him into type 4 CRS, which include obesity, hyperhomocystinemia, hyper dyslipidemia, hypertension and all. So lifestyle modification and, um, uh, and the correction of uh, anemia if present, uh, uh, titratable medications and uh, if the patient is having calcium phosphate deposition and try to keep the calcium phosphate level below 50 mg per meter spent. Coming to type 5 cardiorenal syndrome, um, this is a systemic uh, uh, disease. Is, um, so correcting the underlying cause is, it can be seen in patients of diabetes, vasculitis, sepsis, cirrhosis. So correct the underlying cause. If needed, put the patient on vasopressors, inotropes, diuretic, and rarely renal replacement therapy may be required. So to summarize, patients with uh, type 1 uh, cardiorenal syndrome diuretics as the patient is volume overloaded and uh, if uh, diuretics are um, of less help even a removal of ultrafiltrate can be helpful and uh, putting the patients of vasodilators may be helpful coming to type 2 crs we put the patient on um, ac inhibitors beta blockers arbs as they are significantly reduces the mortality and morbidity in congestive heart failure if the patient is not but tolerating the reasons, even vasodilators can be helped. As the patient is having primary cardiac issue, left ventricular SS devices may be of help if the patient is being planned for um, uh, transplantation as a bridge to transplantation uh, or surgery. Coming to type 3 CRS, it is a renal cardiac issue. The core management of uh, it lies in the uh, extravascular and um, intravascular control with either use of diuretics or renal replacement therapy. Uh, and identifying uh, uh, the nephrotoxic agents, avoiding it, fluid, optimizing fluid, and correction of the underlying uh, uh, metabolic parameters may be of help. In type 4 uh, cardiorenal syndrome, um, uh, um, modifiable risk factors such as smoking, alcohol should be abstinent. Um, if the patient is having dyslipidemia, hypertension control, anemia correction, malnutrition, hyper, all uh, these have been stone uh, found to be of helpful in type 4 CRS. Um, uh, type 5 CRS is because of say, secondary systemic disease. Treat of the underlying causes helps in the uh, uh, is the mainstay of treatment. Associated renal and cardiac complications should be managed on an individual basis. Coming to, um, there are various profiles of cardiorenal syndrome, um, which I would just uh, try to um, put it in a nutshell. When the patient is having cardiorenal syndrome and he is very hypovolemic. Like, um, uh, oh, I just will add up. When a patient of cardiorenal syndrome comes, we should look at five points. What is his fluid status? What is his blood pressure? What is his cardiac output? What is his uh, volume status? What is his the status of his renal disease? If the patient is um, hypovolemic, his fluid status is very low. Uh, um, his cardiac output will be low. There will be no proteinuria. So these patients should be managed with uh, will um, as there uh, um, there's too hypovolemic even though they are in cardiorenal syndrome we would like to give them fluids and stop them diuretics as they're too dry if the patient is too much of volume loaded and he is having uh, very high cvp which is um, uh, uh, described as too wet so the patient is having hypervolemia though his uh, cardiac output is normal there is no proteinuria so we'll uh, try to uh, continue diuretics for him. If needed, we will add uh, distal tubular diuretics. And uh, if uh, the patient is still not responding, we can remove ultrafiltrate. Uh, if the patient is having severe vasoconstriction, and uh, then uh, we can put him on vasodilatory uh, therapy. If the patient is too vasodilated, as in patients of sepsis, so we can put him on vasoconstrictor uh, agents, inotropes, and if needed, uh, ventricular assist devices. If the patient is having a pump failure as a, 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 a failure of a, the pumping activity of heart, then we can put them put the patient on vasopressor sinotrope. If needed, we can use left ventricular SS devices. Um, and lastly, if the patient is a known case of intrinsic renal disease or who is diuretic resistant, continue diuretic. 
and if needed do renal replacement therapy so these are the various profiles of cardio renal syndrome in which um, uh, uh, according to the precipitating cause we can uh, decide on the treatment coming to um, uh, the summarization of cardio renal syndrome it is a complex pathophysiological condition treatment is uh, to be individualized, individualized based on the etiology early diagnosis is important for better survival novel biomarkers uh, can be used for early diagnosis each patient should be assessed with risk factors um, and uh, should be followed up with these are all the four trials uh, which have been in, uh, studied in uh, cardio renal syndrome I just uh, um, uh, if time permits and later we can discuss on this coming to pulmonary renal syndrome here the patient will have diffuse alveolar hemorrhage along with rapid progressive glomerular nephritis um, usually this is a non specific inflammatory syndrome so um, there will be presence of diffuse alveolar hemorrhage um, um, the, the patient complains of breathlessness hemoptysis on x ray we can see alveolar opacities sometimes we can see nodules or rarely the x ray can be normal to in few cases the patient may have underlying anemia hypoxemia uh, uh, as the patients have rpg and we may look for rbcs in urine uh, or foamy urine and the presence of any cast well uh, next uh, coming to so the patient will have uh, um, blood uh, uncontrolled blood pressure with decreased renal function um, uh, so a patient who has hemoptysis uh, we should look in this patient for uh, presence of nephritis of rpg and vice versa uh, to which leads to diagnosis of uh, um, pulmonary renal syndrome um, uh, pulmonary function tests and ball are not diagnosis but they may help in confirmation of diffuse alveolar hemorrhage in patients with glomerular nephritis and pulmonary infiltrates with of nephritis plex with bronchoscopy helps in exclusion of infection and confirmation of diffuse alveolar hemorrhage uh, it is classified um, um, into uh, anca associated vasculitis and non anca associated vasculitis which includes anti gpm antibody mediated anca negative vasculitis immune complex mediated vasculitis drug induced vasculitis infection sinoplasm idiopathic pulmonary renal coming into detail this is a very big topic which so i'll just uh, like um, discuss about anca associated vasculitis which is the most commonly seen in our everyday clinical scenario anca associated vasculitis um, um, includes uh, granulomatous polyangiitis which was previously you know formerly known as wegner uh, granulomatosis the second is eosinophilic granulocytosis with polyangiitis and microscopic polyangiitis uh, the as anca associated vasculitis uh, we do immunofluorescent assay and elisa to confirm them so um, what are the uh, how is the diagnostic algorithm so the patient presents with diffuse alveolar hemorrhage and rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis uh, uh, most commonly uh, uh, we can see diffuse alveolar hemorrhage uh, in which in 90% of the cases turns out to be anca associated vasculitis uh, rarely the patient may present with glomerular presence on biopsy uh, uh, mimics include uh, infectious conditions uh, cancers and um microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and a few of the cardiac uh, um, anomalies like heart failure tumors mitral valve disease all coming to the outline uh, the detailed history examination is important hematological and serological testing bronchoscopy kidney biopsy helps us to guide the treatment diagnostic work um, uh, initially uh, take a cl um, clinical evaluation uh, detailed history Uh, get a bl blood investigations imaging findings and look for uh, presence of any aka uh, signs of vasculitis uh, based on the laboratory investigations and um, ball uh, uh, then uh, uh, go ahead with the renal biopsy uh, uh, based on that uh, plan the treatment if the uh, tissue biopsy uh, so uh, here uh, the patient presents with clinical radiological features of uh, diffuse alveolar hemorrhage with rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis pulmonary renal syndrome diagnosis is made so ultrasound abdomen uh, is done to rule out uh, renal lesions echo is done to rule out cardiac failure uh, sepsis screening is done to rule out infection <coughs> then the patient has all the above test negative look at anti gbm antibodies and uh, uh, anca um, 
and uh, start the patient on empirical glucocorticoid. Uh, if the patient has um, lung uh, function test, pulmonary function test with uh, barring bronchoscopy, it is it consistent with diff diffuse alveolar hemorrhage? A look at if the patient is having positive anta vasculitis treated with glucocorticoids, cyclophosphamide plus or minus rituximab. If the patient has severe renal injury, we can even consider plasma exchange. If the patient is a known case of positive anti GBM antibody, we treat him with glucocorticoids, cyclophosphamide, and plasma exchange. If the patient is negative anta and anti GB, as di discussed in classification, um, we can treat uh, based on the underlying scenario. To conclude, Pulmonary renal syndrome is a urgent and, um, um, clinical situation which needs to be addressed immediately. The most common cause is anca associated vasculitis. Uh, focus should be on early recognition, confirmation of diagnosis, and aggressive treatment as it decreases the mortality and morbidity. Uh, a patient and may uh, present with pneumonia like features. Uh, management should include uh, antibiotics uh, uh, and uh, workup should be completed. Uh, if the after the completion of work, if the diagnosis is established, treatment should begin with pulse dose steroids and cyclophosphamide. If there is a life threatening renal and pulmonary involvement, early use of plasma exchange um, plus or minus IVIG in the case of resistant cases may be helpful. Uh, um, the next renal transplantation is uh, the alternative if the patient is a known case of end stage renal disease. Nowadays, newer immunomodulated to have agents have been on trial basis. Uh, 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 these are the current biological therapies so you, which have been on the trial for the uh, treatment of pulmonary renal syndrome, which includes mycophenolate, mucil, rituximab, infliximab, uh, antithymosin, globulin. Coming to heptopulmonary syndrome. Um, it is a combination of intrapulmonary vascular dilatation and hypoxemia in patients of CLD with portal hypertension. There will be dilatation of the pre-capillary and the capillary level of pulmonary circulation, which leads to VQ mismatch, intrapulmonary shunting, and limitation of oxygen diffusion. Um, how will we screen these patients? The pathophysiology here is the vascular dilatation. So the patient will have a SP saturation of less than 96% which is found to be highly sensitive and 88% uh, specific for detecting patients of heptopulmonary syndrome with a PO2 of less than 70. This was the diagnostic criteria of heptopulmonary syndrome. Um, uh, coming to with the um, workup, the patient with chronic liver disease, if a uh, pulse oximetry uh, showing saturation of greater than 96%, uh, and there is uh, no gas exchange, uh, no uh, gas exchange abnormality, so uh, heptopulmonary is unlikely. If saturation is less than 96%, get an echoder. Uh, look for her um, um, uh, arterial blood gas analysis, which uh, differentiates uh, based on the PO2 values and PO2 into mild and based on PFT ingestion, moderate and severe heptopulmonary syndrome. Uh, coming to the um, treatment part of heptopulmonary syndrome, the patient may benefit with oxygen and uh, uh, the um, uh, treatment of choice will be to liver transplantation. Uh, um, coming to pulmonary complications, the patient that has an advanced liver disease may require ICU admission if he is very dyspneic. Like, um, uh, based on the blood gas and the chest imaging, we should uh, treat the underlying cause, uh, which can be oxygen supplementation, can be via nasal bronze or if needed, ventilation. And um, based on this uh, liver status uh, and uh, rest parameters, can plan for liver transplantation. Coming to hepto-adrenal syndrome, it is uh, defined as a deficient production of glucocorticoids, either because of of uh, structural damage to adrenal glands or impairment of hypothalamic pituitary access. Relative adrenal sufficiency is because of inadequate glucocortical activity uh, in severe um, illnesses. This was termed as critical illness related corticosteroid insufficiency. Uh, this uh, uh, study by Paul Eric, uh, Paul Merrick in, uh, et al., in which he described about this heptorenal syndrome and uh, uh, about how the relative ad adrenal insufficiency. Uh, uh, his pathophysiology includes um, because of heptorenal adrenal syndrome, I mean, there is decreased cortisol production leading to dysfunction of hypothalamic pituitary acid, causing relative adrenal insufficiency in patients with cirrhosis. 
leading to low MAP, thus causing renal hypoperfusion. Um, and the treatment it be to supplement it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Akshit. Very nice presentation and uh, very extensive uh, topic actually. And but uh, you summarized uh, everything uh, in a nutshell. Uh, very good uh, tabular forms. Uh, any questions? Hello. Ah, uh, nutshell do me nut open. Chesi, explain chesi. Question, sir. Hello. Hello. Good morning, David. Accept. Uh, uh, good presentation. Uh, lot of matter in that, but uh, it's too fast, and for anybody to get into their brains, uh, it's difficult to get everything inside. So each one, actually, uh, each system, the each syndrome, the each topic, or sorry, or case scenario, to all that. But in under the bagur tunde demo. So, but anyway, like. Uh, uh, it takes time to get everything in. So, but presentation and slides and explanation, it's good. Thank you. Any questions? Akshit, my question is, uh, in uh, almost all the syndromes, septorenal, cardiorenal, uh, there is uh, one, two types of patient. One is a uh, uh, volume overloaded patient and uh, another one is a uh, volume underloaded, dry patient. Yes, sir. So, uh, is there any study that uh, vexus is useful for because all cardiorenal, hepatorenal uh, patients, pulmonary? No, so, is there any vexus study related to this syndrome? to evaluate the patient volume status? So no, there is no study, sir. Because I think uh, access is very important to understand the fluid status of that individual organ. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Akshit, uh, yes, sir. nice presentation. Last year, you syndrome, you have a What adrenal syndrome? Hepato adrenal syndrome, sir. Hepato? Adrenal syndrome. Sir, usually you put heptorenal syndrome in patients. Low. This is an, uh, one of the precipitating entity because of which cortic, uh, the corticosteroid insufficiency will worsen out. Presentation uh, separately put a heptorenal liver failure. Yes, so, liver failure is not an adrenal game. Uh, liver failure on a uh, relative adrenal insufficiency of uh, sir because of uh, decreased cortisol uh, and uh, um, hyperperfusion of all the organs well, uh, even decrease uh, um, uh, adrenal uh, uh, cortisol production tundi, hypothalamic dysfunction of the hypothalamic pituitary axis the so relative adrenal insufficiency of okay. like the special uh, hypo Hypo uh, hypoperfusion of two adrenal levels per the other mammal gani. Um, sir, uh, um, I study low, are they discussed? Yes, sir. Jackness are normally they present as hyponatremia. Epidena, uh, hyponatremia and liver cirrhosis patient not responding to normal therapy. The most common cause will be uh, adrenal insufficiency. They respond to fluid. David, cut I mean now. Yes, madam. Is there? Hello. Hello. Hypo, going on? Hyponatremia causes are different because hyponatremia is fluid overload. Liver failure and fluid overload. But there is a relative hypo, uh, like adrenal insufficiency mm. which uh, responds to fluid overload. No, that's okay. But how, what is the mechanism for uh, this uh, hypocortisolism in these patients? Sir? And a chronic hypoperfusion, sir. Then I need a chronic hypoperfusion. Okay. There are the HRS low. There are a uh, uh, lot of controversies in HRS. Yes, sir. We discussed, sir. So, because 
వాట్ డూ థింక్ హెచ్ఆర్ఎస్ ఈజ్ దాంట్లో చాలా ఇష్యూస్ అయితే ఉన్నాయి హెచ్ఆర్ఎస్ లో చేశారు <laughs> ఓవర్ ఎవల్యూషన్ దాని తర్వాత ఈ కిట్కో గైడ్ లైన్స్ ఇవన్నీ వచ్చాక ఇనిషియల్లీ వాళ్ళు క్రియాట్ నేను పెట్టుకుని చేశారు దానికి వాస్ట్ ట్రైన్ ఇచ్చారు స్లోగా అలాగా ఓవర్ ఎ పీరియడ్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ ఒక త్రీ ఫోర్ టైమ్స్ రివైజ్ చేసిన తర్వాత ఇన్ ద ఇయర్ ఆఫ్ టూ థౌజండ్ నైన్టీన్ ఎంజల్ని ఎట్ ఆల్ అని ఒక కొత్త క్లాసిఫికేషన్ ఇచ్చారు మ్యామ్ విత్ న్యూ డయాగ్నస్టిక్ సో వాళ్ళు వచ్చినప్పుడు డివైడెడ్ ఇన్ టు హెచ్ఆర్ఎస్ ఏకే అండ్ హెచ్ఆర్ఎస్ నాన్ ఏకే హెచ్ఆర్ఎస్ నాన్ ఏకే కన్సిస్ ఆఫ్ హెచ్ఆర్ఎస్ ఎక్యూట్ కిడ్నీ డిజీజ్ హెచ్ఆర్ఎస్ క్రానిక్ కిడ్నీ డిజీజ్ సో అప్పుడు వాళ్ళు ఫర్ ద బెటర్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఏమన్నారంటే ఇఫ్ ద పేషెంట్ హ్యాస్ అ రీనల్ అన్సర్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ హీస్ రీనల్ ఫంక్షన్ రిటర్న్స్ టు నార్మల్ విత్ ఇన్ లెస్ దాన్ ఏ వీక్ ఇట్ కెన్ ఈ టర్మ్ డస్ ఏకే ఐ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ టేక్స్ అరౌండ్ వన్ వీక్ టు లెస్ దాన్ త్రీ మంత్స్ ఇట్ ఇస్ టర్మ్ డస్ ఎక్యూట్ కిడ్నీ డిజీజ్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ గ్రేటర్ దాన్ త్రీ మంత్స్ Uh, it is chronic kidney disease and uh, if he is dialysis department it is end stage renal disease and chepper ma'am actually actually we will follow a a1 na how does it correlate with the hrs1 ante ede ede di hrs1 lo kostundi ede di hrs2 lo kostundi alage emanna cheyochu indha ma'am already adi kuda vallu describe chesaru hrs ak ani hrs1 annaru hrs non ak ani hrs2 annaru yeah yeah okay and hrs uh, ckd is a uh, different thing ha ah, hrs ckd is also type of hrs 2 uh, le hrs 2 lo ne 2 lo ne okay okay fine okay thank you you send no, this no, I, no, I, no, yeah we will send this uh, ppt madam evaru adugutnaru srinivas sir ah na em led ante actually na asld guidelines ani follow out channel ga ante mean hepatitis hepatologist ani ఇండియన్స్ కానీ జనరల్ గా రికమెండేషన్స్ ఫాలో అయ్యేది ఏఎస్ఎల్డి అదే నువ్వు చెప్పిన క్లాసిఫికేషన్ రైట్ ఏ బట్ టూ థౌసండ్ ట్వంటీ వన్ లో వాట్ దే హెడ్ అప్డేటెడ్ ఇస్ యాజ్ పర్ దాన్ ఏకే కింద అంటే జస్ట్ ఫర్ ద స్టూడెంట్స్ ఎవరైనా ఉంటే బట్ అంటే రికమెండేషన్ ఎప్పుడైనా చెప్పేటప్పుడు ఒక గైడ్ లైన్స్ ప్రకారం చెప్తాం కాబట్టి ఏఎస్ఎల్డి అనేది చూస్తాం టూ థౌజండ్ ఫోర్టీన్ తర్వాత ఐ థింక్ టూ థౌసండ్ ట్వంటీ వన్ దే హెడ్ అప్డేటెడ్ ద గైడ్ లైన్స్ అంటే హెపటాలజీ సిరోసిస్ గైడ్ లైన్స్ మోస్ట్లీ ఈఎస్ఎల్ కానీ ఏఎస్ఎల్డి కానీ ఈ రెండు గైడ్ లైన్స్ బేస్ మీద మనకి నెక్స్ట్ ఫీజ్ ఉంటుంది మేనేజ్మెంట్ ఇప్పుడు స్టాండర్డైజేషన్ అక్షిత్ టు ఐడెంటిఫై హెపటో ఎడ్రినల్ ఎడ్రినల్ ఇన్సఫిషియన్సీ వాట్ ఆర్ ద టెస్ట్ బి డన్ ఇస్ ఇట్ ఆన్ క్లినికల్ పిక్చర్ లైక్ ఎడ్రినల్ ఇన్సఫిషియన్సీ లైక్ హైపోటెన్షన్ హైపోనాట్రీమియా ఆల్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ ఇస్ దర్ ఎనీ స్పెసిఫిక్ టెస్ట్ ఐడెంటిఫై ది హెపటో ఎడ్రినల్ సిండ్రోమ్ లేదు సార్ క్లినికల్ బేసిస్ మీద సార్ Uh, when it comes to organs apade the clinical basis mein when it is primary adrenal failure then we can have uh, some uh, tests uh, but uh, is secondary adrenal disease because of impairment of hypothalamus pituitary axis aithe mari clinical suspicion me the ichi chustunnam sir mari yeah that means that on what clinical suspicion uh, uh, hypotension దాన్ని పట్టుకుని అయితే డయాగ్నోస్ చేయలేము సార్ ఇదైతే సీనియర్స్ చెప్పాల్సి నాకైతే అసలు ఇది అసలు దొరకలేదు కూడా ఇక్కడ బేసికలీ ఏంటంటే హెప్టో రీనల్ సిండ్రోమ్ లో వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ప్రెస్పిరేటింగ్ కాజెస్ లో హెప్టో ఎటర్నల్ రాశారని చెప్పి నేను పెట్టాను సార్ అంతే ఎనీ క్వశ్చన్స్ హలో
Halo. Ana. Mohan da gar lera. Ima aine message better sir Jano mari mari unnaru ledo. Unnaru unnaru. Ye matlaat ledo. Teli sir. సార్ ఇంకేంటి క్వశ్చన్ అడగండి సెకండరీ ఇన్సఫిషియన్సీస్ స్టెరాయిడ్స్ వాస్ హెల్ప్ఫుల్ ఎవరు సార్ మాకు అంత ఇంకా ఎక్కలే సార్ ఇది ఆర్గన్ ట్రస్ట్ ఆఫ్ అచ్చే నేను పిఏ ప్రెసెంట్ ఐడియా ఫర్ లెవర్ ట్రస్ట్ సార్ దేర్ ఇస్ వన్ క్వశ్చన్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ పిఏ ప్రెసెంట్ వాట్ సార్ చెప్పండి ఇట్ వాస్ అ సెకండరీ ఇన్సఫిషియన్సీ ఈ స్టెరాయిడ్స్ వాస్ హెల్ప్ఫుల్ అక్షిత్ సెక్రటరీ ఇన్సఫిషియన్సీ అయినప్పుడు ఇట్ ఇస్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ఇంపేర్మెంట్ కాబట్టి స్టెరాయిడ్స్ హెల్ప్ఫుల్ గా ఉంటాయి సార్ ఆ స్టెరాయిడ్స్ విల్ బి హెల్ప్ఫుల్ डेफिनेटली ఆ అంటే దిస్ లిటిల్ అంటే ఇన్ పేషెంట్ సెకండరీ ఇన్సఫిషియన్సీ ప్రీవియస్లీ వి యూస్డ్ టు టెస్ట్ విత్ ఆ ఏసిటిహెచ్ టెస్ట్ సో వి ఐ థింక్ 2008 ఆర్ 9 వి గాట్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ ట్రయల్స్ ఆన్ ఇన్ స్పెసిఫికల్ ఇన్ సెప్సిస్ అండ్ సెప్టిక్ షాక్ సెప్టిక్ షాక్ పేషెంట్స్ Uh, but uh, steroids little increase the mean arterial pressure but other outcomes it did not uh, decrease so andukane ipudu ante like insufficiency unna lekapoyina it did not show much difference andukane shock lo manam second insufficiency of steroids unda adrenal unda leda ani check cheyakuntane istam manam shock lo so septic shock annapudu manam we are not testing it actually టెస్ట్ చేసినా కానీ పెద్దగా అంత యూజ్ ఉండదు అని ఆ ట్రయల్ చెప్పింది కాబట్టి మనం అప్పటి నుండి ఆర్సన ట్రయల్ చెప్పింది కాబట్టి అప్పటి నుండి మనం చేయట్లేదు అది బెనిఫిట్ ఉంటుంది బట్ అగైన్ ఇవన్నీ కూడా సైకిల్ సార్ ఇది హైడ్రోకార్డ్స్ అని ఒకసారి uh benefit under rules and not benefit under but definitely if in, in septic shock it will definitely decrease the requirement of as officers acha pa pressure criteria for lt sir the hepatopulmonary syndrome lo ha sir pa pressure criteria for lt ఏ ప్రెజర్స్ ఐడియా లేదు సార్ నాట ఏ ప్రెజర్స్ ఫర్ ఎల్టి ఎల్టి సార్ అంటే ఏ అంటే ఐ మీన్ ఎంత క్రైటీరియా ఎంత దాటితే ఇస్ అన్ ఇండికేషన్ ఫర్ ఎల్టి లివర్ ట్రాన్స్ప్లాంట్ లివర్ ట్రాన్స్ప్లాంట్ ఐ థింక్ ఇస్ నాట్ మెన్షన్ దట్ వన్ యు టెల్ సార్ అంటే ఐ మీన్ స్టార్ట్స్ విత్ మోర్ దాన్ ట్వంటీ ఫైవ్ ఐ థింక్ అది వేరే క్రైటీరియా నాకు గుర్తులేదు మోర్ దాన్ ట్వంటీ ఫైవ్ దగ్గర నుండి మీకు ఇండికేషన్ స్టార్ట్ అవుతుంది మోర్ దాన్ సిక్స్టీ ఫైవ్ ఐ థింక్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు డెఫినెట్లీ గో ఫర్ ఇట్ వాల్యూస్ ఈ మధ్యలో ఉంటాయి అవును సార్ అవును సార్ దట్ ఈస్ అన్ ఇండికేషన్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అంటే మిగతా కండిషన్స్ అన్ని రిలోట్ చేశారు and you have made a diagnosis of uh, hepatopulmonary syndrome and the pf pressures are more going more then that is an indication for it okay <coughs> if uh, we are... okay akshit uh, very nice presentation thank you thank you sir are the articles and are the end launch posters and i'll post it in the group sir yeah yeah thank you articles on ppt also so that uh, whenever it is required the type of case as madam said uh, each case and each syndrome we have to means we identify the cases and related syndrome is difficult but uh, we have to extrapolate into this uh, one and uh, we have to say uh, what type of uh, syndrome the patient is put in then it is helpful uh, uh, what is the ppt and the uh, article a uh, very nice presentation uh, yes. thank you very much thank you all the audience for your